All right, you ready? I'm ready. All right. Welcome back to our channel. My name is Danny Taylor. And I'm Giacomo. Do you have a last name? I think so. Marchese. <laughs> <laughs> we are the owners of Vegan Proteins. We just put out a podcast this week yeah. about all about vegan protein, protein goals, what you should be aiming to take in for protein and why. And a lot of questions that we get are like, yeah, okay, but I get it, protein's important, but how do you do it? We have this like epic haul of some of our favorite vegan protein sources here. It was pretty hard to narrow it down. I mean, th this is the condensed version of the vegan protein options out there. There's so many more, but this is like a select few. There are a few things we wanted to find and we couldn't find, so they're not here, but we will mention them. And I don't want you to think that because this is what's on the table right now, that this is what we eat every day. We're gonna go through the stuff that we eat very frequently, the stuff that's more of a treat, but it's just good to know that there's a lot of options out there. And we both eat a pretty high protein vegan diet, actually. We're not saying everybody has to do that, but we do, and it's, it's very possible if that's what you choose to do. All right, so when somebody says, what type of foods do you eat to get your protein? What are the first things that you say? Seitan, tofu, tempeh. Okay, that's what we say. Usually, tofu, tempeh, seitan. That's where we start. It's worth noting as well, we deliberately did not use protein powders at all today. These are just foods. The number of vegan protein powders on the market is insane. This is just food today. So, okay, tofu, tempeh, seitan. You wanna start with tofu? Sure. All right, let me pull the tofus out here. So tofu is probably the most mystifying food of all the foods, I think. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there about tofu and soy in general, and if that's a video that you guys wanna hear about, let us know in the comments down below. We would love to tackle that topic. But there's a lot of different kinds of tofu. This is just your regular old extra firm tofu. It's my favorite. You can get tofu in different textures, every texture from silken to extra firm. Extra firm is pretty uh, easy to cook. Let's talk about what's in it. So in this whole package, there is about 45 grams of protein for a dollar. That's pretty cheap. The key with tofu is you have to learn how to cook it. A lot of people say, I've had tofu, I don't like it. It tastes like nothing. Tofu on its own tastes like nothing. You know what else tastes like nothing? Flour. But if you learn how to cook flour, you can make muffins, cookies, cakes, everything. Tofu is the same way. It's just an ingredient you need to learn how to flavor. So this one is packed in water, and that's what these cases look like here. So you can press the water out to give it a firmer, meatier texture, but honestly, you don't have to. And because this is like one of our go-tos, we don't often do that. It's, this is super quick, easy, super cheap protein. And then this is also a plain tofu like this one, but you can tell the packaging is obviously different. It's packed in plastic, it's vacuum sealed, so it has a much lower water content. Usually these types of tofu are a bit fresher as well, but macro wise, they are about the same. So these over here are Hodo organic raised tofu and soy boy smoked tofu. And these are basically pre-cooked, pre-flavored, convenience types foods. Say you're traveling or you just want something on the go or you just don't have time to prepare it. These would be both very convenient ways to have tofu like pretty much right out of the package pre-cooked. Both very tasty. And each one of these, there's two bricks in here. Each one has 22 grams of protein. Okay, the next food here is tempeh. So if you've heard of tempeh and you don't know what it is, essentially it is soybeans or sometimes chickpeas or sometimes grains and they are pressed together and fermented. So this one we have here, it's the only brand we have, even though there's lots of brands of it, is a soy boy tempeh. So this one is made out of soy. This whole brick here has about 40 grams of protein. And to cook this, there's a lot of ways to cook it, but the easiest way is to slice it thin, marinate it and bake it, or cube it, marinate it and air fry it. Lots of ways you can cook it. It has like a nutty texture to it, as opposed to the tofu that has a more almost like cheesy type of a texture to it. So yeah, it's just a different soy-based protein, but both the tofu and the tempeh are pretty minimally processed. 
sources of protein. Next, I want to talk about seitan. This is my personal favorite stuff. You got about like 85, 90% protein by volume, and it's vegetable broth, vital wheat gluten, and spices. It's as simple as that. Just three ingredients, and it's it's ready to eat pretty much right out of the package. I would say you can make this in a, uh, in a soup. You can grill it up uh, with a stir fry with some veggies and some grains. You can do literally anything with it that you can do pretty with meat. Pretty much anything. And a lot of the things on the table were gonna say that exact same thing. Seitan is probably what we eat the most of in this house as a protein source. We don't always buy seitan. This package runs like probably like $4. And there is over 50 grams of protein in this package, but if you can make it yourself, you can save a lot of money. So we buy Vital Wheat Gluten. It looks like flour. We buy it by the 50 pound bag and we make our own seitan. And you can find multiple recipes on this channel already about how to make your own mock meats using the tofu and the Vital Wheat Gluten and or both. But there's a lot of ones that are already on the market pre-made, like the West Soy Seitan by Eves. Probably the easiest one to find. This is probably the most common and this is just plain seitan, basically. But you can also buy seitan type products that are flavored to taste like specific meats. Upton's bacon seitan is a fan favorite of ours. It's Love it. so tasty. I mean, literally, you just open it up, put it on the pan, heat it up for like five minutes, and you're ready. Really tastes good with breakfast. I mean, each one of these packages have about 50 grams of protein in it, roughly, yeah. and you can find them just about anywhere. I went through a whole prep in 2015 where I had this every day. Not the most cost-effective thing I've ever done. So good, though. So, so mm -hmm. good. And this is a relatively new one, the Sweet Earth Harmless Ham. So it's very, very similar in that it's just flavored like ham. You can fry it up, you can put it in a sandwich, and uh, you can find these at Target, actually, which is one of the things that makes this particular brand so cool is how easy it is to find. So seitan, yeah, definitely one of our absolute favorites. Okay, so now we mentioned tofu, tempeh, seitan, and we showed you the basic versions of those, but there's actually a lot of variations to them where it's like a combination of tofu and seitan to make what we call mock meats, which we are huge fans of mock meats. I know they get a bad rap for being so processed, but they're not really as processed as you think. And that's one of the things that our channel sets out to prove is that they're not as processed as you think they are. It's tofu and seitan and spices, and they're just cooked a certain way. If you guys ever want a video about why we are fully in defense of mock meat, let us know. Want to talk about these? Oh man. I just tried these out at the Olympia last year. Koto is nice enough to send us some. These are sesame yuba noodles. And honestly, I'm not 100% sure exactly what they are, but I feel like they're the, the, the top layer of the tofu. Okay, yeah, so when you make soy milk, you know when you were a kid and you'd make jello or, and it would get a skin? Okay, yuba is the skin that appears on the top of soy milk. If you've Oops. ever been to a sushi place and gotten inari sushi, the tofu skin sushi, this is what it is. They're yuba. It's freaking delicious. Yeah, so the yuba is cut into noodles and tossed in like a sesame ginger dressing here. So you can eat this cold out of the package, you can heat it up. It's really, really good. You don't have to do anything to it really. And again, this container has about 50 grams of protein in it. All right, I feel like I have to talk about this one. Eve's Canadian Bacon, which they've recently changed the name of to Eve's Veggie Bacon. This is the highest protein per calorie food I have ever found, including protein powders. So three slices of this stuff has 14 grams of protein, two grams of carbs, and a half a gram of fat. This is my prep staple. If you are not new to this channel, you saw that I ate this constantly throughout prep because it had the lowest carbs and the lowest fat per amount of protein that I needed to hit during prep. We buy this by the case. So we talked about how we don't eat all of these things all the time. A lot of this stuff is just like a treat now and then, not this one. This one's a staple for us. We could go on about that one forever. It's literally like our number one protein source because of just how- Eves. You wanna sponsor us, yo? Please. Like, <laughs> you've uh, literally collected thousands and thousands of our dollars for that seriously. product. And all of the clients we've told you did as well. <laughs> Other slices, tofurkey, fantastic. So top ingredients, vital wheat gluten, organic tofu, and they make 
a plethora of slices, sausages. They make the tofurkey roast for Thanksgiving. Tofurkey is classic. I, that's one of the first mock meats that ever existed and it's still tried and true to this day. They continue to make new products. The slices are just, they're great. I mean, they, they remind me of like a classic cut of deli meat. You can't go wrong with them. Other deli, this one's a little bit harder to find. These are the field roast slices and the macros are about the same as tofurkey. They have a couple of different flavors. I feel like it's a little bit heartier, whereas these ones are more like if you would get like thin sliced deli such and such back before you were vegan, that's closer to this. This is like heartier slices. Good stuff. Hard for us to find around here. Had to make a special trip to get that. I like the lentil sage version of those, but they're all really good. They're all so good. Another Sweet Earth product. Yes. Go nuts. <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised by this one. The benevolent bacon to me was a game changer in the vegan bacon department because it tastes smoked and it cooks up really well. I really enjoy this stuff at breakfast time specifically. Yeah, it's got a slightly higher fat content mm. than some of the other veggie bacons that are out there, but I think that's part of what gives it a really bacony taste. And obviously serving sizes of bacon are a bit smaller, but in this package, there's still 40 grams of protein. Yes, yeah, so you'll notice like not every single vegan meat is strictly about how much protein can I get in and can I have the thing with the protein? You know, we like to enjoy our foods too. And you know, sometimes you're willing to have a vegan meat with a little more fat and carbs in it because it's just tasty. Well, that's the thing is a lot of non vegan protein sources, you can find them with like virtually zero carbs and zero fat. You look at chicken breast or white fish or egg whites and they have virtually no carbs, no fat. They're straight protein sources. In the vegan world, that's harder to find, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just means you need to be more educated about the macros of the particular foods that you're eating. For example, tofu, very low carb, one or two grams per serving. The fat content of a soybean is a bit higher though. You need to take the fat content into account when you're plugging in your daily totals. And that goes for pretty much everything here. Some of these things are higher in carbs and lower in fat. Some of them are lower in carbs and higher in fat. There's a learning curve to it and you have to learn what they are. So actually we're gonna give two prime examples, things that are wildly different here. So we really slacked on the sausage department here in showcasing amazing sausages. So sausages that are so, so good that we don't have here are field roast sausages and tofurkey sausages. So good, but we don't have them to show you. But we do have this, the OG of vegan hot dogs. Did you eat these when you went vegan? Oh my gosh, like buy the package, literally buy the package. So I went vegan in 2002, I believe, and these were like the only, these and plain Boca burgers were the only things that I could find. To this day, I still like them. So Field Gross and Tofurky have both come out with their own hot dogs that are arguably better than these, but one link, so they're pretty small hot dogs, seven grams of protein, zero carbohydrates, and two and a half grams of fat. So if you have to go low carb, these are a really good choice. They're higher in sodium, so that's just something you need to be aware of because it can make the scale jump, but it's temporarily. So these are delicious. And then these are brand new. And both of these would, I would say, would be perfect like on a nice hot summer day to grill up if you want like your classic hot dogs or your classic sausages. These kind of remind me of the sausages that mom and grandma used to make. These are the brats, but they also make an Italian sausage. But basically, when I cook these up, they cook up just the, the same way that sausage would cook up back in the day, you know, before I was vegan. The taste and the texture, like everything is spot on. Something about the way that Beyond Meat crafts their products, like they really, really nail not just the seasoning, but the taste and the texture. Yeah, so you could serve these to people who are not vegan and they probably wouldn't know. The number of times we've seen somebody eat Beyond Meat and have no idea that it was vegan is crazy. That said, these are higher in fat. They're 12 grams of fat per sausage and they have 16 grams of protein. So they're really not the highest protein food percentage wise out of everything we have here. And they're quite pricey. So this is one of those things that since it's come out, I think this is only the third time we've ever bought them. Just to give you an idea of how close they taste to, you know, non-vegan meat. I remember when you tried the Beyond Burgers, mm -hmm. you were kind of like, I don't even know if I could eat this right now. Cause that's- It's too meaty. It yeah. gave me meat mouth. I didn't like it. <laughs> 
So moving on to burgers, since you just mentioned them, we actually don't have the Beyond Burger here to show you, but it is fantastic. Like the Beyond brought, a lot higher in fat though. So it is something you definitely need to be aware of. Probably not something most people could work into their macros every single day, and they're pretty expensive. But if you're out at a restaurant, the Beyond Burger is showing up on so many menus. Get it, but I gotta throw it back. I gotta throw it back to the OG. Boca deserves some love. Okay, so they just rebranded their formulas. This used to be the vegan burger. Now it's called the original turkey burger. And I think I think they improved upon the formula here, but these are like a prep dream for me. I eat these a lot when I'm on prep. Each burger is 13 grams of protein, six grams of carbs, and only one gram of fat. So I'll have two of these for lunch often, and they come in a two pack like this. There's two in the package. Obviously this one's already open. This is another staple for us. And the cool thing about these is you can find them almost anywhere and we almost always find them on sale. You know, even before I knew what the word vegan was, believe it or not, that was a thing. As a kid, I remember having those. That's how long they've been around. Yeah, and I still love them. I still think they're good. I know they're not as like fun as some of the newer veggie burgers and mock meats that are out there, but they're still really good and they're still some of the most macro-friendly burgers out there. And I will say with the reformulation, they became even juicier now. Like they were a little more on the drier side. Yeah, but still day. only one gram of fat. This is harder to find. For a while, I was having this Gardein, great company. I think everything Gardein makes is vegan, which is cool. Cause like Boca has some burgers that are vegetarian. They have egg, they have cheese. Gardein is all vegan to my knowledge, but I do have a hard time finding these, but they're a bit bigger in size. So they're like the size of the Beyond Burgers, but the macros are better. There's only five grams of fat, eight grams of carbs, and 14 grams of protein in them. If you can find them, they're definitely worth a try. Honorable mention, the new Morningstar Farms meat lover vegan burger. Mm. I think we found it at Target. That's a good one too, but this is a, a rare find for us. The thing with all these vegan meat products, they, they're in such high demand that these companies cannot even keep up with the production, which is the reason why you may not find all of them, but you know, sooner or later, we're just gonna have like, vegan meat take over the world yeah. pretty much. You know, a lot of these things, when I like assign them to my clients, like, hey, go get this, they're like, I can't find it. And when we reach out to the companies, it's because they are struggling to keep up with demand because it's such a growing market right now. It's a good problem for us to have. All right, and speaking of burgers, we also have have like beefless crumbles. We have two different ones here to showcase. Once again, the tried and true Boca, the OG. So it's like a ground beef, both of these. And then we have the Beyond Meat Beefless Crumbles. Macro-wise, I will use different ones depending on what my current goals are. So these, the Boca Crumbles, are fat-free. If I have to keep my fat low, this is the way to go. 11 grams of protein, five grams of carbs per serving, which the serving is only a half cup, so I'm usually having two or three servings at a time. These, however, have very few carbs, one carb, and they have a little bit more fat. Um, I think they're both really good. These are a heartier crumble, and this is a finer crumble, but they're both great. And, honorable mention. Okay, and as we've talked about, like we don't eat these all the time, it's expensive to eat like that every day, especially I just said I'm eating two or three servings at this at a time. But as we mentioned the vital wheat gluten earlier, I make my own crumbles from scratch in my kitchen. So if I were to open this up, it would look almost identical to this. And macro wise, it's almost identical. You can make stuff that looks like this in your house. An experiment. This was actually made by accident. Yep, I uh, overcooked my seitan. It was a little bit too tough. I threw it in the food processor and I said, holy crap, that's crumbles. Genius. So, okay, moving on. We have like chicken strips here. And it's funny, these are both open. So these are like one of my weaknesses or any kind of vegan chicken strip. Like I love them. If I could have it for dinner every night, I would. But again, cost prohibitive. I guess it's not really cost prohibitive. It's just there's cheaper ways to make it at home. And I prefer to do that when I can. But I love these both, I would say equally. Beyond Meat Chicken Strips. This I believe was their first product. Again, I've had many preps where this was the protein source here. And it's made out of mostly pea protein, which does make it a little bit different than some of the other protein sources that we've shown. Which reminds me, all of the Beyond Meat products we've shown, except for this one, are both soy-free and gluten-free. So a lot of what we've mentioned is soy-based or gluten-based, but Beyond Meat has a ton of soy-free and gluten-free 
product. They use pea protein as their secret ingredient to keep things soy free, gluten free, but still high in protein. Maybe not all of the Beyond Meat products, but a lot of them. And that's actually one of those newer age ingredients that are starting to be included in vegan meat. So people are getting pretty crafty with this plant based meat stuff. But this one is gluten free, not soy free. Morningstar Farms is neither soy free nor gluten free. And as a lot of you guys might know, Morningstar Farms for years and years has not really been a very vegan friendly company. Everything has been just vegetarian. There's been either dairy or egg in almost all their products. But in the last year, they have made so many of their products vegan. And this one in particular, the chicken strips meal starters. And if you can find the pulled pork, which we cannot find here, but it is amazing. Macros are fantastic. Absolutely love it. So I think that wraps up all of our mock meats that we have here. So tofu, tempeh, seitan, and mock meats, our favorite ones right there. The big takeaway is that these are not like evil foods. They're not made with magic. They are made out of the first ingredients that we showed you. The vital wheat gluten, which is still sitting here, and tofu. That's how all of these are made, or with the Beyond Meat pea protein. If you can swing them, they're really fun things to have in your meal plan. And if you can't swing them, you can learn how to make your own. And whatever you wanna learn, I love a challenge, so let us know. All right, let's move on to some plant-based milks that have protein in it. This is a soy-based silk, unsweetened. You get about eight grams of protein in a cup. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't consider it a protein food per se, because you're getting eight grams of protein per 80 calories, but the protein does sneak up when you get a little bit of it in a lot of the foods that you already like to enjoy, like some soy milk with your coffee or during the day or with cereal, whatever. I am a soy girl through and through. So when I first went vegan, I was getting soy milks that were like vanilla flavored and the carbs in that really added up, or I got like chocolate soy milk, which is delicious by the way, but the carbs in it really added up. So now I get the unsweetened, and I can use it in sweet or savory recipes because it's unsweetened. Literally, if you make a smoothie and have two cups of this as the base, then you have 14 to 16 grams of protein right there just from that. So this is my favorite, as opposed to almond milks, cashew milks, coconut milks, those all tend to be very low in protein. Sometimes super low in calorie, like an unsweetened almond milk is like 20 calories per cup. So it's great for prep when you have to keep calories really low, but they're not outstanding protein sources. So just something to keep in mind. Again, this goes back to just like knowing the macros in your food. Same thing with this ripple over here, except this one is pea based. Same thing uh, macro wise, they both have the same amount of protein, similar macro profile basically. I would say the tastes are both pretty different. Ripple, I want to say, is a little more creamier than the soy. A little milk. bit. It's a little bit thicker. Yeah. And I, yeah, it's, it's, I'm not quite sure how to describe the difference in taste between the two of them, but. You just gotta find one that you like, really. But if you're soy free, this is a great option for That's you. True. And again, you can find this one at Target. This one also has added DHA to it. Mm. Which is pretty cool. Good point. The other thing I will say about those two, the protein dense plant milks are, are far more creamier than say the almond and the coconut and the cashew milks. So we didn't put protein powders in our mix today in our lot, but there are a lot of pre-made protein drinks coming out to the market, like muscle milk, which is disgusting by the way, and not vegan, but there's like versions of that coming out. I should open this so I can show you. This one we have here is by Evolve and it is a plant-based protein shake. I believe we got it in the mellow mocha flavor. And this is cool if you're on the go, it's just already made for you in this little container. Four of these was $12, so they were like $3 a pop. So again, not something that you would make an everyday staple, but really good in a pinch. 20 grams of protein, 19 grams of carbs, which usually when you get a pre-made protein drink, the carbs are crazy high, and one gram of fat. So again, moderate carbs, very low fat. I am not a big protein shake drinker, but this actually tastes really good. Super fast, easy, 20 grams of protein right there. And there's other ones too. There's Vega, there's Orgain, but you always have to check and make sure it's actually vegan because like Orgain makes ones that aren't vegan as well. Even like during the work week, I feel like something like this, if you're training at lunch and you don't have time to eat your lunch because you're spending most, most of your lunchtime training, you could have one of these, chug them on the way back to your 
a home office or work office or whatever. And that, that is another way I'd say that it's convenient in a pinch. And they don't have to be refrigerated until they're opened. So I'm looking at the expired by date and these are good for almost all of this year. So I assume as long as it's not sitting in like a hot car for a long time, you could just keep these at your office, on your desk, in a drawer somewhere, as in, in a pinch food. Let's move on to protein pastas. Protein pasta. I thought we were talking about protein, not pastas, but here we go. This one over here, I don't know, I feel like Exploration has been around for a while. I think the they block. were the first ones. And you'd be surprised just how much protein you can get in a pasta, believe it or not, and still really taste Like this one, for example, 24 grams of protein in one serving. Okay, this is what I like about Explore Asian over the other pastas. These are actually low in carbs. So they both have a lot of protein, but I think this comes with a lot of carbs. There's some other ones like pow pasta. I saw another one yesterday. High protein, also pretty high in carbs. This one, the same serving, has 24 grams of protein. It only has 20 grams of carbs. And they also have a black bean pasta that's a little bit lower in carbs. It doesn't taste like regular pasta as much as Banza. This one I feel like tastes closer to regular pasta. But as long as you know that, there's so much you could do with it. You could do classic Italian pasta, or you could do like an Asian stir fry or like a Thai peanut noodle. There's a lot you can do with these. And this one here is edamame and mung bean. Again, they also make a black bean pasta. Banza pasta is made with chickpeas. So this one has in one serving 14 grams of protein and 32 grams of carbs. So a little higher in carbs, a little lower in protein, but the taste is a lot closer. Both of these are soy and gluten free. Yeah, and now the other thing, I mean, you hear us saying protein over and over again, believe it or not, sometimes we have to move away from the super dense protein sourced foods, but we still want to get a little bit of protein in our meal. So bonzo would be a perfect example of something you can have when you have to cool it on the protein, because believe it or not, that does happen too. Not nearly as often as the opposite. All right. Our camera died, but we're back. So now we're gonna talk about some things that we use while cooking to just bump up the protein, but they're not super, super protein dense foods. So lentils are the most protein dense bean, except for soybeans. So per half a cup of cooked lentils, you get 20 grams of carbs and nine grams of protein, which is better than black beans or kidney beans or mung beans or anything like that. And they're really, really cheap. So we get dried lentils and we blend them up and use them to make our seitan, or we just have them as a side dish or put them in soup. Amazing. Nutritional yeast, this stuff you can put on everything. I personally like to sprinkle it all over my vegetables and you'd be really surprised just how much you can sneak up the protein count for the day by adding a little bit of nutritional yeast into all of your meals. And it's really tasty, it has like a nutty, cheesy like taste and texture to really it. Really unfortunate name. Whoever named it nutritional yeast, really, you could have done better with that. But yes. it's like powdered gold. And it's very high in B vitamins. So incidentally, you are gonna get a whole lot of nutrition out of it too. Pea protein. So technically a protein powder. This is just Bob's Red Mill unflavored pea protein. You can add this by the tablespoon to soups or sauces to thicken them. Uh, it almost acts like a cornstarch a little bit and it adds quite a bit of protein. I don't like to use pea protein for baking. If I'm gonna do that, I prefer to use a rice-based protein because I just feel like it cooks up so much better. Pea protein, when you cook it, can be a little bit gummy. TVP, textured vegetable protein. So this is literally what it sounds like. It's vegetable protein, usually from soy, sometimes from other vegetables. It's been texturized and you can hear it. They're like hard crumbles, almost like a granola texture, but when you hydrate them, they get a chewy meaty texture like the crumbles. And this can be, again, added to soups, used to make burgers, put in tofu scrambles. It's so versatile. I mean, you could even like season it up with some hickory smoke and turn into like little bacon bits to put in with your vegetables. And I do have some clients who literally put this on their yogurt like granola. Mm. Now, I don't know if I'm vouching for that one yet, but I know people who do it. And then, these two, this is, they're actually both PB2. This is PB2, which is powdered peanut butter, defatted powdered peanut butter. We buy big jars and put it in 
smaller jars. And then this is their new product, which is PB2 almond butter powder. For this, both of them, two tablespoons, the macros are the same, five grams of carbs, five grams of protein, one and a half grams of fat. So significantly lower in fat than peanut butter or almond butter. And it adds so much flavor. Not that I have a problem with putting five tablespoons of peanut butter into something, but sometimes I don't want the calories, but I want the taste of the peanut butter. But you can bake with these. You can make sauces with these. You can sprinkle it on top of your cereal or your yogurt or whatever. They're so freaking good that these, especially the PB2 peanut butter, staples, absolute staples in our lives. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about a couple of snacks here. Yeah, we can bring all of the snacks here. There were a couple we couldn't find for this video, but protein bars really run the gamut in terms of quality and macros. You wanna talk about the Cliff Builder bar? Yeah, the base of this is actually soy protein, which once again, the whole soy thing, like soy protein is bad, not true. Soy protein has one of the best amino acid profiles out there. And the way that they made these bars, they're just, they have such a good taste and texture to them. You could find them everywhere. And everywhere, get, every gas station in the country. 20 grams, wherever you go, random gas station, you have 20 grams of plant-based protein, you can't beat that. Yeah, so I mean, they are pretty high in carbs. It's like 27 grams of carbs eight grams of fat. So, I mean, this is really a meal, but you can find it anywhere. It's cheap, usually $2 or less, and uh, super, super convenient. Slightly more macro-friendly bar, but harder to find, is the Nugo Slim bars. Not all of the flavors are vegan. You have to make sure it's a vegan flavor. This is a chocolate mint, it's my favorite. So this bar here has 18 protein, 17 carbs, so lower in carbs, and five grams of fat. So a lighter bar. Um, I have yet to find any bars that have crazy good macros and high protein. So you just need to know that when you're eating a protein bar, it's gonna come along with some carbs and fats. Also, no cow bars, I think should get a mention here as well, because they have decent macros as well. Brahmi beans. Essentially, these are just pickled lupini beans. That's all they are. So you can get the pastine ones in the jar, and that's usually what I get. But these are fun because Brahmi came out with ones in flavor. So like this is chili lime. I have to open them and show you because not a lot of people, I didn't understand. When my friend Natalie Matthews started eating these, she was like, they're lupini beans. And I thought they were chips made out of lupini beans. No, 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 no. They are pickled, wet lupini beans. So it's just strange packaging for what it is. But again, this is just a protein extra. You can eat them as a snack. You could throw them on a salad. There's three servings in here. Each serving has seven grams of protein, seven grams of carbs. But again, kind of pricey. So you can get the cheap jars in the like, usually in the European pickle aisle. You know what I'm talking about. These are a well-kept secret. They've been around for a very long time. I, my grandmother used to give them to us as snacks when we were kids. And I've been obsessed with lucchini beans ever since your family gave them to me. Yeah, and now they're making them and packing them because they're delicious and they're so high in protein. Okay, this is actually, I think you can only get this online, the Catalina Crunch Ditch Sugar Cereal. This is a cereal that's very low in sugar, zero sugar actually, and eight grams of protein per serving. If you like crunchy cereal, this is really, really good. It's not sweet, which I like. I'll, Giacomo needs a little more sweetness. I'll in throw life. some blueberries or strawberries He's not the sweet enough, people. <laughs> but yeah, finding certain cereals that are higher in protein, maybe lower in carbs or lower in sugar, depending on your goals, can be a really kind of good way to sneak in some extra protein. And the last honorable mention that we couldn't find in time for this is Prot's protein chips. They're soy free, they're gluten free, they're 15 grams of protein per serving, like eight grams of carbs and four grams of fat. And they make a barbecue and a nacho cheese. So delicious. All right, well, obviously there are so many more options out there, but these are just some of the many different ways that you can get protein-dense vegan protein sources galore. You can make them on your own, you can buy them at stores, they're delicious, there's no nothing magical about them. Few simple ingredients, tasty stuff. Let us know what kind of vegan protein sources you enjoy, and let us know maybe what kind of recipes that you want to see more of from these different uh, vegan protein foods that we've shown you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will talk to you next week.